Hey guys and girls, uh, today we're going to look at pure components in React. I think pure components is very important to learn because if you understand pure components, then you would understand how the re-rendering works in React. And I think a lot of people would ask uh, in an interview about pure components because they know if you can explain it, you would understand how re-rendering works. So I think it's important to know. So what is a pure component? I would say a component that never sins. Uh, that's a pure component. Well, jokes apart, in React, when you call set state method, the re-rendering would happen, right? And it's kind of blind. It doesn't really look at, have you ever really changed the value or not? It just does it blindly. But sometimes these updates are not needed and that is a sin. And so we can fix it with a pure component. So let's look at these pure components and how to use it and where to use it. And welcome to Texi Tutorials. All right, so I have created a project using Create React App. And inside the source folder, I have this main app component, and this is what we're gonna do our work. And I like to keep things simpler, you know. So if you want to explain a very concept, a very complex concept like a pure component, then you need to have a very simple project, like a bare minimum, so you can, so people can understand. I know a lot of tutorials uh, I've seen where they actually have so much code uh, to explain a con complex concept, and it doesn't really work. So I'm gonna do this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a simple component where um, we can run the set state method. And, but we can set the same value um, and we're going to look at how it renders every time we do it. And then we're going to uh, have a solution using pure components where we can actually avoid that re-render. Okay. All right. So here I'm going to have a function component so its name it's going to be temp and obviously it's an error function if you don't know what the function components are I have a tutorial on it I'll provide a link here basically you would have some props and inside it should be very simple so it would return some div props dot test now we haven't actually created this state here which we're gonna do it here. So inside here, let's create our state. So state equal to, uh, we're gonna have a simple state. So it's gonna have a table called val and its value is going to be one. Okay, very simple. Oh, I should not be here. All right, and inside here, I can use the component that I created, temp, and I can pass the uh, the val inside here i can say val equal to uh, this dot state dot val all right so i'm passing this val it's receiving it this should be val here now let's render this so if i run npm start all right so i'm getting this one here which is nothing but this val now let's pick a scenario. So for example, let's say if your application is displaying score of a football game. Now, um, it needs to pull the score every few seconds to see if it's changed, right? So it will, it will do that and it would update, basically it has to run the set state, whichever sc new score comes in and you would see the updated uh, state and uh, the, so the dom also renders the new score now as you know in the football game score hardly changes right so uh, you might be getting the same same score every time you poll uh, but when you run the set state it would re-render your component anyway so let's create a situation uh, where it has to do something like this so usually if you want to make an Ajax call, you have to do it in a specific lifecycle hook. And the lifecycle hook is, it's called component did 
mount. And this method um, executes after the component is rendered. And so if you, if you want to make an AJAX call, you can do it here. And um, if you want to know more about this lifecycle hooks, in a previous tutorial, I covered that and I can provide a link here so you would understand better. But basically, it's a hook that runs one time after the component is mounted. Um, so in order to simulate the polling, what I can do, I can run a set timeout or set interval, should I say. Inside here, I can run the set, uh, set state. So I can say this dot set state. And we already know that the state current, the value is one. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set the same state again. So it would be return val is one. And for the set interval, I wanna put, um, let's say two second polling. So every two second, it would set the state. Now let's look at what happens. Okay, in order to check what happens, we need to put some console log so we can figure out when it renders. So one, one console log I wanna put is here, render app. I'm also gonna put one render method, one console log here. Uh, this would be render temp. Okay, so we will we'll know exactly what's happening. As you can see, it's rendering app temp every two seconds, even though the value hasn't changed yet. As I said, because the set state method is kind of blind, it doesn't check the value, and that's why it's happening. So how do we fix this? One way to do it is uh, without using pure component. Uh, to fix this, the one solution is uh, just before component renders, there is another lifecycle hook called should should component update. There we can make a decision to render or not based on um, the state itself. So let's do it here. Should component update. All right, so this function has two arguments. One is next uh, prop and second is next state. So what is next uh, state means whichever the when I call the set state, whichever the next state is, it's going to pass me here. And I already have the, the current state. So what I can do, I can compare them to find out if it has changed or not. So if it, if it has not changed, then I don't need to do render. If I, then I would return false here. And if I return false here, then it would not render. If I return to, true, then it should render. So what I can do here is uh, return. Um, I can say this dot state equal to uh, next state. Then I wanna don't wanna render. Else I wanna render, right? And I can also print uh, the next state here. So I can say console log uh, next state and console log uh, this dot state and we can put here so that we would know next state and here we can say uh, current state all right so if i save it and run it let's see what happens so the thing is, that because it, will, it still renders. That is because I'm comparing the objects. So the objects are different. So what I need to do is compare the value itself. So if I do dot val here, then the value should be the same and it should stop rendering. All right, as you can see, it prints the value, but it doesn't really uh, render. So those two console logs are gone. So that's what we want. So this is how it really, you can actually stop it from rendering. So now your football score is updated, but it's not re-rendering. Now let's say if I, instead of one, if my football score was, let's say, um, if I do math dot random, which means it's gonna produce random numbers, then every time I'm, get, I'm getting Hopefully, every time I'm going to get a new number. So in this case, as you can see here, so in that case, it's always de-renders because 
I'm getting different value every time, right? Which we want. But if the same value happens, I don't want to render. So this is one way to do it. Uh, but there is a better way using pure components. So if I if I use a pure component, then I should not be using uh, I should not be using should component update hook because it's kind of redundant. Why am I making a decision here or here? So since I'm using pure component, I should just comment this this guy out. Here I have a class app extends component. Instead, um, it should extend pure component, and I need to still um, get the pure component from here. So I would say pure component. So I need to import it, uh, which is part of the React. Instead of the random value here, I'm just gonna put back R1, which means always update the same value. So let's see what happens. All right, as you can see, uh, if I refresh it, I would get two renders. This is the early render and there is no re-rendering happen. So this is how the magic works. Now, there is an important point to be noticed here. Don't use pure components just anywhere. It's quite dangerous to use it without knowing your state. And the reason why is, let's say if you are, if you have a much, I mean, we have a simple state here. But let's say if you have a much bigger state where you have a nested components within nested components, what, what pure component does is it does a shallow compare. What shallow compare is, it just compares the object, so reference. So previous state and the current state should have the same reference. If it's, if it's the same reference, then it thinks that it, nothing has changed. But let's say if you have a much larger component tree, something could have changed. Um, let's say if somebody pushed another element to, into an array somewhere um, at the uh, leaf level component, the main component would think, oh, nothing has happened, so it would not even render it. And what would happen is that if you don't, if you're not rendering the, the top level component, then nothing would get re-rendered because it it thinks that nothing has changed, uh, which is quite dangerous. So places you want to use this is exactly like this, where you have probably a leaf node where you know your, your state is similar to this and it's not very complex. All right, so that's about it, folks. Uh, I'll, I'll put the code on the GitHub site and provide the link in the description. And uh, I'm trying to move this course as much as possible. So if you have any suggestions on the future topic, uh, please suggest to me so that I can make those tutorial. Otherwise, I'll just, um, you know, go with my flow. All right, so I hope you learned from something from this tutorial. And if you did, please uh, like, subscribe, provide a nice comment, and you can help me uh, to help the channel uh, via Patreon. I'll provide a link here, and thank you.